Hi! Today we're going to be painting a sunflower. There are so many beautiful, colorful varieties of sunflowers, and I'm hoping to be able to tuck in maybe two varieties. So one kind of a focal point one, and then um, one kind of peeking around the edge. Um, for the focal point one, we'll do a very traditional um, darker center, yellow, yellow petals. And then um, there's some beautiful varieties that have more red and orange in the petals, which will be fun. So um, I'm starting out with a page that I have toned with a sort of purpley, a muted purple. I mixed um, ultramarine blue with some orange and white. Um, the orange dulls the blue. It, it neutralizes the blue because they are opposite each other on the color wheel. And so it kind of just makes this neat um, kind of low-key background. And purple and yellow are beautiful together. So I thought a yellow sunflower on a purple background would be be pretty, but I wanted to do something a little different than the traditional purple, just kind of that really um, sort of crayon purple color. So I thought we'd go with something like this. Um, because sunflowers have such a huge center disc, I'm going to start by defining the disc and um, that will help us know where to place the petals. Um, so we're starting out with uh, titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium red, phthalo green, and um, yellow ochre. So I'm going to just pull, get my brush wet a little bit here, and then just pull out a little yellow ochre. I'm just going to use this to sort of dot a circle where I want the center of my, um, the center of my sunflower to be the disc is what they call it. And um, I think I'm going to have it be near the top because I think it'd be fun to have a stem and some leaves. And so I'm going to have it just a little off center so we can have one here and then maybe one kind of coming behind it or a bud or something like that when they are when they're kind of like starting to fade and curl up that might be kind of fun. I don't know. We'll see what we <laughs> I'll see what I feel like. So I'm going to dot the center and just sort of um save its place. I don't really want to paint the center yet cuz I feel like I usually can do it better after the petals are there and not really worry about how the petals go into the center and like preserving anything that I've already painted. So I'm just gonna save its place like that. This color will get covered up. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse out my little brush and we're gonna use, I was holding up my brush. I think I wanna use my big brush for um, the, the petals because a kind of a single stroke with this brush will be nice for that size. So first I'm going to mix up kind of a warm yellow color. I like to change my yellow. Um, I don't want to use primary yellow. That's a little too too bright, I think. Um, I want them to be a little bit softer, maybe a little bit warmer. Like a little red, some yellow ochre. I like that color. It's actually really pretty and that gives us a nice medium that we can add darker details to and lighter details so I kind of like that. Let's just go with that and to get a nice flow I think I'm going to add just a bit of water so that they'll come off the petals will come off my brush in a nice stroke. Okay so um, as I was looking at reference photos and I have a couple up on my computer they um, sunflowers have a variety of types of petals. Some are longer with um, smaller centers, some have shorter petals, bigger centers. I'm going to go kind of like a medium size, like maybe about this far out. And they're, um, you know, they're not all right next to each other. They have some gaps. So I'm just going to do, and I like that kind of in um, imperfect edge to it. That's really pretty. So some of these petals I think will um, you know, touch closer and then other ones I'm going to hint at. And there seems to be a row behind and a row in front. And so um, I think I might kind of hint at one that's sort of tucked behind here and there. And maybe I'll just skip ahead a little bit and put in one there and then I can kind of go back. Got 
one in there. And see, I didn't want to do the center because see how I'm just dragging them into the middle without really caring. This is really fun. This is very therapeutic. <laughs> and I'm trying to kind of pay attention to my length so that I don't get too short or too long on one side so I can even kind of do a few all the way around as a guide so that I kind of know what I'm working towards to help me with that round shape as I'm going around. I can make some a little bit more fluttery. Oh, I like that. Kind of changing up the direction that they go in a little bit there. I feel like I'm starting to run out of my color a little bit. I think I'll pause and make some more. There we go. And then we can adjust it into our lighter and darker colors too as we work through the rest of the painting. I think I want that one to be a little longer. There we go. I think I'll leave a space. I think that's really pretty the way that that kind of the shape of that one. I'll just keep that there and then continue doing some ones that are a little bit more closer together up here. And then maybe I'll kind of have some that are in front a bit. I'll come back and kind of clarify some of those. And any place I see the purple really showing through, I'll kind of clean that up. But I don't mind it, it showing a little bit. And this is where having a really high quality yellow is very important. I used to buy, you know, when I was starting out, you want to just buy inexpensive paint so you can experiment. But yellows were always very, uh, very frustrating to me because they, um, inexpensive acrylics don't have nearly as much pigment in them as the more expensive ones. And so with yellow, it's already kind of a transparent color. And so if you have very little pigment in your um, in your yellow to begin with, that can be very frustrating. And you feel like you need to do a bunch of layers just to get a solid yellow. So I'm using um, Liquitex Professional here. I've also bought Golden Acrylics. I try to buy one of those two brands um, because they're the highest quality acrylic paints that I've ever used and they have beautiful, strong, opaque yellows. So that is a tip, especially for this painting. Um, Okay, so I think we're done with the first set of, first sort of layer of petals. Now I'm going to darken and make a little bit more of an orangey yellow, and we're going to kind of tint the bases of the petals when they connect in. Um, certain varieties can have a kind of a darker patch there, which I think is really pretty. So we're going to make an orange and kind of just an earthy color. I'll hold it up and see. I feel like I want a little bit more contrast, so I'm going to bring in some more some more red and some more ochre to kind of mute the red a little bit. There, I think that's going to be better. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, I think that's great. So I'm going to start from the middle point now and then drag up a little bit on each petal. And I'm trying to decide if I want to use this big brush. I have so much of my paint in it, but I feel like I might want to make it more of a fine line than a big swath. So I'm just going to get some of the paint off of this brush because it's just full of it. 
and um, then I'll switch over to my small brush because as the petals connect in with the center, they are they have sort of a creased look to them. So I'm going to just rinse out my big brush here. Okay, and then we'll switch over and I think I'll add a little bit of water to help that with the detail, the flow of the details. Okay. I feel like this almost got lighter. I probably got more red or more yellow out of that big brush. So I'm going to add some more red. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm just taking a look at my references to kind of see some, how some of the creases go. So each petal can just have little lines like that, like one or two for each one, I think is enough. And we can start wherever in the middle of the, um, in the center, because this is going to get covered up. I need a little bit more water. And I love how this is looking. That really just adds a lot of warmth. So we'll just kind of do the same thing all the way around. Okay, so now we have our, our orange, and I might just save that um, for the center. I think that's going to be useful for making some brown in our center. So I'm going to come down here and get some more yellow, and we're going to make a, a lighter color for the tips of the petals. And they can kind of have a little bit of a highlight there. I'm not quite sure how much white we're going to need, so let's try that and see. We'll hold it up. I think I want a little bit more contrast, so we're going to bring this over. I'm gonna put it on a petal, it's hard for me to tell. So let's see. Um, yeah, I think that's light enough. So I think I'm going to just sort of follow maybe the outside edges of the petals. I can streak down, down towards the center a little bit, but here and there, I don't wanna cover up all that bright yellow, but just add a bit of a contrasting highlight on them. And I can kind of even emphasize the ones that come um, are in front and are overlapping over um, some of the ones behind them. Then that this can kind of help them pop. There we go. So you can kind of just find the the way of stroking it on that feels the most comfortable for you. I think just kind of starting at the end and just doing a little small, small strokes going inwards is working out. There we go.
I feel like on some of these, I'm kind of losing a little bit of the point because, um, because of this. So I, I might want to extend them a tiny bit here and there. I don't know. I think overall it's having a really nice kind of textured fluttery look. So I'm happy with that. Okay. So here I'm going to just come all the way around here. We'll kind of go around the side of that one. And I like that. See, like highlighting an edge in front of the other ones, and then that really brings it to the forefront and kind of pulls your eye to that particular petal. Oh, there. I'm already, I already made my way all the way around. Okay. We'll go around that one a little bit. So I'll just look around, see if any of them need a little extra attention. I think I want to maybe bring my highlight a little further down on that one since it's sitting in front. Okay, I really like that. Now, I'm re kind of figuring out where my center is going to be. And now we're going to make kind of a reddish brown first and fill in, fill in the middle and then we'll add some darker details because the ones I'm looking at um, have some reddish and then some, some more chocolatey brown and it really can vary. I'm, I see some photos that look more reddish towards the outside and darker in the middle, and then I see ones that are opposite. Um, so I don't think there's a right or a wrong way of doing it. So um, I think I'll probably have the dark, the dark towards the edges, and then the more reddish in the middle. Um, we'll kind of play with it. So I'm gonna make a reddish brown from red and a little bit of green. Let's pull that in. We're just going to turn this into brown. And if it's looking too intense red, then you're going to want to bring some more green in. And the green kind of dulls it and cools it down. All right, let's see. Is that I don't think that's quite dark enough. I'm just going to add a little bit more green. Green also is very dark, and so it's going to darken our brown for us. I think that um, my, my color here had so much yellow in it, it's staying pretty light. So I'm kind of fighting against some of, some of that lightness right now. So there we go. I think that's getting about where I want it, maybe a little bit more red. And then we're going to mix those together. Oops, it got really cool there. So I'm going to bring in some more red. There. Okay, I think that's, that's a good start at least. So I'm going to just real carefully try to find my edge again. I don't want to go filling in too quickly until I um, have kind of reestablished my circle. So I'm going to try to just work my way around, try to find it kind of peeking, peeking out from behind those petals. There we go. So just work our way. There we go. I think it came out a little further on this edge, so we're going to extend that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> There's like lots of trucks outside my window right now, so I bet you can hear them. Okay, there we go. Ooh, that's kind of fun having the purple show through there. I don't think we're going to have that in the end, but that's a neat a neat little flash of an exciting color. So that actually reminds me that we can be expressive with this center. Um, we can add in color like a little touch of blue or anything we want to kind of liven it up and um, make it 
more even more exciting than the actual the actual flower. Um, I'm seeing some of them that have green in the center, like little green dots and texture. So that would be really cool to do too. Okay, so we've got kind of our base coat now. I'm just trying to think. I like the ones I'm seeing that have a pretty dark brown near the edges and then it's a little bit lighter um, towards the middle. So I'm going to make a dark brown. So I'm just doing the green and the red and see how it's way darker because there's no yellow mixed in to lighten things up. But the green is really strong, so I think I put in too much green there. There we go, when there's more red in the mixture, then it turns into just a real dark chocolate color. I can just kind of get off a little bit of the yellow in my brush. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of dash this around the edges. It's um, everything about the center of the sunflower is very textural. And so these, this looks like a bigger texture near the edges. And then things get like more little dots. So I'm just going to kind of make this um, kind of go up. And it doesn't have to be even. I see it sort of extending onto the petals a little bit. So I can make this just a little kind of soft dashed edge here. Ooh, and I like a little bit how the yellow's pulling in there. That's pretty. We might want to kind of embrace that look a little bit. I like that, that mixture look. But some of these petals are all the way dry, so it's not really doing that all the way around. So I might actually go back and grab a little bit of yellow on my brush and just kind of make that happen on purpose because I think that's really pretty. Now the edge, I think this edge is going to be a little thicker. Um, so I'm going to just pull it, like add another row, kind of bring it in a bit. Okay, I think I'm going to pause and maybe pull in a little bit of yellow because I think that's just so pretty. Kind of extend that, that look a little bit here and there. I think I like that better than just like solid dark. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of my yellow or a little bit of orange. And some of that's ending up a little on the light side, so I'll go back to my brown and kind of tone it down a little bit, but I do like that. It's those little happy accidents that are fun to discover as you're painting. You're like, oh, I really like how those two things just sort of smudge. And then you can kind of do it on purpose. Okay, so now we're going to switch to more of an orange. I think I'm going to rinse. I don't want to have too much of that dark in my brush. We're going to create a more sort of intense orange like the orange that's in the petals and um, then kind of dot it into the center because in the very middle there's all these little flower buds which adds such fun texture, but we do want it, okay, we do want it to be brown, but we want it to be an orangey brown. There we go. That's pretty good, and we're just gonna kinda play. I'm not sure, mm, I want it to be a little, little darker, I think, and a little bit more red. I'm running out of my red, so I'm gonna, let's see, where'd my red go? Okay, to be a pretty warm 
orangey brown. Let's see if that got too red. Because I want it to definitely contrast with what we've got in the middle there. No, I don't think that's I don't think that's too red. I think that's gonna have some a nice pop to it. Okay, so um I'm going to just make some little little marks and I'm there's definitely you could get really intricate and really detailed and I don't want to belabor all of that so I'm just going to do some small dashes and just kind of sprinkle them in you can kind of find a rhythm to your brush strokes where you kind of go up and then down and just try to keep them small because they're a smaller texture than what's on these um the darker brown they're little smaller dashes and they can overlap over the edge of the brown a little bit because it's sort of like blending from one section of the center to the next. And I'm going to bring them, I'm actually going to bring them all the way to the middle and then we'll kind of do another color on top of them in the center. We'll kind of evaluate and you want them to sort of radiate out from the middle because everything joins in sort of a, a center point almost. I think it actually does kind of come out and, and point at the center of the disc. Um, we'll see if we can communicate that a little bit. I'm not gonna worry about trying to get it to look through two, three dimensional or anything, but okay. I like how that looks. And now I think I'm gonna come back and it needs a little bit of this dark brown, I think in between some of the dashes. I think maybe there wasn't quite enough contrast um, as much as I'd like. So I'm just going to get what's left of this chocolate brown, kind of gather it up, and then really gently, just in between, kind of dot that in. It's mixing in a little bit, which is fine. Okay. There. I think that has a little bit more of that dense texture that I was looking for. So now we have the option of adding some green in the center, which I think I'm definitely going to do. Um, I think that's beautiful. And so I'm going to make a light green the medium there's there's so many different varieties you guys and as I'm looking I'm looking at um, a photo I found on Pinterest that's sort of like a variety pack I think it's seeds you could probably buy there are so many different styles and so many different looks and so you there's endless variations which is just so fun so I'm just picking one and um, if you find some photo references that you love that you want to incorporate and change totally go for that that's so what it's all about is making it unique and something that really um, makes you happy and have fun painting it. So I don't want a really intense pure green. Um, I want it to have that sort of earthy natural feel. So I'm mixing it with ochre because adding that sort of muted yellow just warms it up and kind of dulls down that really, really intense phthalo green. And I think that is going to be really nice. So I might end up doing two shades of green. I think I'll do this sort of one and then maybe a lighter one, we'll see. So I want it joining to a point in the middle. So there's my little point. And then I'm going to just do some little radiating marks. And I want them to be really dense right at the middle and then sort of fade. So um, I'm just gonna kind of do a bunch of them really close together right there and then start um, making them just spread out a little bit more, make less close together, so it kind of just integrates. There, and I'm using a really light hand because if you push down on all this wet paint, you're just gonna like smudge and mix probably too much, so I'm just barely touching. There we go, and I think I want a lighter 
a lighter green in the middle. We're in the center area to draw our eye to it more. So I'm going to come grab some yellow and just lighten up a section of this green. I probably don't have to add it to the whole the whole pile of green because we only need a little bit. I think I'm going to even add a little white and a little bit more yellow to make quite a lighter shade for contrast. Ooh, I love how this is looking. I think this will be sort of our final our final touch. Just looking at my photos to see, make sure that I'm getting it in the place where I want it. So what I'm seeing in the photos, what really helps it have sort of that pointed look in the middle is a shadow kind of on the underside. I don't want to overdo it, but I think having a couple little dots of just this pure dark green will help it look like it has a little shadow because um, the whole disc kind of comes to a point there. So I think what I'm going to do is just on this lower part, like where the shadow would fall underneath, I'll just do a couple little dashes and help it maybe have a little bit of a three-dimensional look. There. Okay. I think we'll just leave that be. I really like that, and I think that is perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to think about doing a stem and some leaves, and I also want one that maybe we'll just, just go ahead and use this color, and I want a second sunflower kind of showing right in this bottom corner. So let's see what we can use. What have we got here? I think I'm going to kind of show the center just a little bit, And we might make it sort of hinted at. I'm just sort of feeling my way, like uh, I think I want it about that big. And um, when things over like are going to overlap each other, sometimes I'll just sort of paint it up to the edge and just sort of leave it looking half painted because I kind of like that look. So I'm not worrying about getting it all perfectly painted all around the edges of that other flower. I'm just going to leave it kind of partial looking. Sort of my personal style. Um, I'm gonna I'm not gonna worry about the edge of the center. We'll we'll fix it up once the petals are there. I'm gonna go back to my big brush. You know what actually I think I want this to be a little bigger before I do that a little bigger and extend a little higher, I think that will be nicer looking. Because then we'll be able to have some petals up there and I think that'll look really pretty. Okay. Oops, ooh, I had a lot of water in that brush there. I'm glad I got that out. Okay, um, I don't think that's gonna be enough, so we're gonna make some more red. If I pull a little green into this, it doesn't matter because um, it's just going to sort of mute the red a little bit, which is fine. Ooh, and there's actually some I'm seeing as I'm glancing over at my photos. There's even some that's all like more of a reddish pinkish. Ooh, so stunning. So maybe I'll put a little white in there. Maybe we'll get a pink tone from all the red. Okay. I 
Oh, and I am going to get some brown on my brush. I wasn't quite thinking about that, but that's okay. I'll just mix it in, and if the red starts getting too dull, then um, I can brighten it up with some more yellow and red. Okay, and I think I'll just stop it right there, and then we'll just paint around the other edge. Ooh, and I used so much paint on this one, I'm going to pull a little off of it because I'm running out, so I'm going to swipe it again to get a little bit. There we go. Maybe we'll bring this one to a bit more point because it is sort of one of the focal point ones. So you can see it so clearly there. Okay, there. I think that's looking really good. So now, um, now I'm going to develop the petals just a little bit more. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on them, um, but I think the um, the a variety I see, which looks really beautiful, is it actually has yellow radiating. So I'm just going to pull some of this yellow, and maybe we'll bring a little bit more bright yellow over. And just at the base of them, the yellow sort of comes from the bottom and goes up into them. So there's like endless variety that you can do on these things. It's amazing. Ooh, this is fun. So we almost have like a... Um, like an opposite look, like we have light with dark radiating and then we have dark with light radiating and I really like that. Now as I'm looking, I almost want to bring, get this uh, dark color and maybe extend one of these petals. It, it looks just a little too square. There, I think that that fixed it. Okay, so now I'm going to hint at a stem and the stem... Okay, this is where we're working on composition. I wasn't sure what I was doing with these petals because I'm not sure if I wasn't sure if I wanted the stem to go over the petals or behind them. So I kind of made them like this medium length and not really long. So I'm actually deciding that the petals are going to go over the stem. So I'm going to extend. Oops, we need to make a bit more of this red color. I'm going to extend. that petal to make it look a little bit more um, on purpose. <laughs> it looked a little unsure of itself. So now it's definitely going long. And so the stem will be definitely behind it on that side, which I really like. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse out my brush and um, we'll finish off the center here. And it doesn't need all the details that this one had because this is where we want our eye to be in the painting. So I'm just gonna kind of dash. Maybe we'll have some lighter, some lighter marks in here. And then we'll come back with the dark and kind of clean up that edge. I kind of like that, just that half finished look where it's just our eye knows that it's going behind there, even though it's just painted up to the edge. Okay, and then I think I'll, I'll just get that light color out of my brush so that we can have a nice dark brown here. And then I'm just going to sort of do that same stroking idea all the way around and kind of just add texture to that edge and not have it be so clean and perfect and kind of hide the ends of the petals that are extending in. And it's also mixing with that yellow, which is pretty. Then I'll kind of just stroke it over the edge of the light brown to kind of blend a little bit. 
Okay, let's see. I actually think a fun detail would be some of some of the sunflowers I see have a little ring of white. Like I think they're the white flowers opening in the center. Teeny tiny little white things. And so I'm going to just get a little white and there was actually some color mixed in with it, which is fine. And I'm just gonna maybe hint at that on this one and not um, try to make it too bold or eye-catching. So I might need to kind of tone, like stroke it a time or two to mix it with the brown to tone it down there. But I kind of like that where it's just this like two sort of different varieties going on there. Okay. So now we're going to do stems. So I, I think I'll just kind of do... Just trying to imagine actually we could do maybe this one will be coming in from this side a little bit and then this one will kind of just go up there and maybe have a leaf i think that'll be nice i'm gonna i'm gonna do them with my big brush because their leaves are very large and i think that'll that'll go better if i use my larger brush for it so i'm just gonna toss the dark green into this pile of green here and see what we come up with and i'll just kind of get the rest of my ochre and we have so much brown on the palette we can toss in some brown if we need to to kind of um soften and make the green eh, I think I will get out a little bit more ochre because I just know this color so well and I really like working with it so we'll, we'll get out a little bit more There we go. And it just lightens up the color really well. Okay. So I think um, this one will be just sort of hinted at right there. And they have these long sort of stems for their leaves. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to kind of at a leaf shape and not make it super particular as I do. So just sort of give it a little uneven edge there. I think that's nice. And maybe I'll hint at the green a little bit more there. We can actually maybe hint at another um, bit of a leaf there to kind of make that not stand out so much. And then this one, I think maybe I'll actually have it um, coming a little bit from the center. It can be more of a leaning flower, maybe. Um, yeah, and then we can give it a little leaf. There, that's just sort of hinted right there. I love that. I love the simplicity of it. And this is just the so the showcase bloom. So now I'm going to uh, just make a lighter shade of this with some yellow and some ochre. Let's give a little bit of a highlight to those leaves. Let's see. Just looking at the photos, see if there's anything I really need to incorporate, but I think we'll just keep it real loose. there I'm really happy with that I think that looks lovely and it just has a really loosely painted quality that helps us focus on um, the more detailed parts of the blooms okay I think that finishes it thank you so much for watching I will see you guys next time bye